Figures released today show that British GDP growth is at a three-year high. I'm joined on the line now by Michael Hewson, a senior market analyst with CMC Markets. Michael, what are the main reasons for this growth, in your opinion? Well, you know, this, this, is, a final, this is a final iteration of, you know, second quarter GDP, and the gain is largely driven by construction and manufacturing. Um, a recovery in those sectors and to be quite honest it's been you know long overdue we've seen an awful lot of stagnation over the last four years and at some point those sectors had to rebound they are starting to rebound the real concern i think remains as to whether or not it's sustainable there was one item in those numbers was a, which was a little bit of a concern and that was a decline in total business investment on the quarter. It was revised down from plus 0.9 to minus 2.7%. So, you know, I think it's a welcome. I think it's welcome that construction and manufacturing are showing signs of recovery. The indications are that, that is going to continue into Q3. You know, and the hope is that it will also continue into Q4. But you know, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. The UK economy is still. 3.3% below where it was in 2007. Is there a problem with wage growth in relation to inflation right now? There is a problem with wage growth in comparison to inflation, yes. Average earnings are basically rising at around about 1.1% on, on an average three-month uh, period, whereas inflation is currently around about 2.7%. So going forward, um, the lag of average earnings relative to inflation is likely to constrain on the services sector and the UK consumer. And the UK consumer makes up around about 65% of UK GDP. So I think the numbers that we've seen so far this year with respect to consumer spending are unlikely to be maintained going forward into Q3 and Q4. And you can sort of see the evidence of that in some of the retail sales numbers that we've seen recently. We, that's been very, very patchy. We've seen very, very good gains. And then last month, August, we saw a minus 0.9% fall. So I think going into Christmas, with the prospects of energy bills rising, I think it's going to be very unlikely that we're going to see the type of um, uh, consumer spending that we saw in the summer. And finally, are these growth figures a reflection of the Eurozone recovery and of the global recovery in general? I think there's, a, there's an element of that. Um, exports have been um, one, of the, one of the key drivers to the recovery um, in the UK economy, but an awful lot of that export recovery actually has been to areas outside of the euro area. You know, the, you, you, you can argue about whether or not the European economy is, is recovering. If you're looking at used car and new car sales in Europe, it's clearly not whereas new car sales here in the UK are still performing uh, fairly well. So I think, yes, the fact that the Euro European economy is starting to you know, pull back some of, the, some of the losses that we've seen over the past you know, two to three years is a good thing, but I think, I think it's only part of the story. The UK economy is, import, is exporting an awful lot more to other markets outside of the Euro area. Michael, thank you for that and thank you for joining me on the line today. And that's all we have time for for now, but do check back later for further updates and interviews from the TV team. Bye for now.